So I've been trying to generate some more readings um, of my short story, um, which is called Into the City. It's kind of a, um, well, it's a romance, but it masquerades as kind of a sort of a Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, combined with all of that whole genre of movies, everything from Twilight to whatever. There's a little bit of everything in there, but um, Buffy's probably the big inspiration in terms of what some of the characters do. Um, the main character's name is Brannock, and he uh, is basically uh, an operative for a secretive organization, um, and he goes around uh, protecting people from monsters and stuff. But again, that's really just the front um, to what the story is really about. Uh, and the story is really about uh, Brannock's relationship um, with uh, his girlfriend Thistle. And so I wanted to read a little bit of a section from early on in the story where uh, Brannock has just gotten back from a patrol and he's been pretty beat up. But as he falls asleep, um, he uh, dreams about when he first met Thistle. It was not the most settled sleep, perhaps not surprisingly given his discomfort and the angst with which he had viewed the earlier encounter. But God, or whoever, was merciful tonight to him as he stretched out in bed as best he could with his aching joints and bruises pulling on parts of his body. The mercy came in the form of Thistle. It was a dream he had had many times before, like it was sent from above to help him keep his mind off of his body, his mission, and his life. It always started off the same way. He and another guy had finally broken down to go shopping. It was going to be one of those days that most guys hated. Shit, he needed everything. His clothes were mostly in tatters, which he didn't care about except that not only did it tend to attract attention from cops, they were always suspicious of a raggedy, beat-up guy striding down the sidewalk or sneaking in and out of an alley. It also sucked because tattered clothing meant weapons and shit falling out of pockets and pouches and off his belt. Not good. But you know what? He had great respect for cops. It's just that they often made his job a hundred times more difficult by nosying around. Brannock was probably one of the few people who would have happily traded his life for that of a cop and his family. He guessed that the main difference was that often the cop had a wife and kids waiting. He did not. Well, that and the prevalence of monsters and shit in his line of work. He also had no food, and his heightened metabolism and his super high activity rate kept, kept the cupboards pretty much bare. That would mean ordering and eating two pizzas every meal, and that hurt his stomach. His shopping partner was one of the few peers who Brannock felt really understood him and didn't rip him for who he was. It was nice. His buddy would say, dude, that's you, so just, you know, do you and fuck what everyone else thinks. The bad guys certainly don't care if you're sensitive, they just want to kill you. That's when his life changed. They went to a sporting goods store, most of them pretty much lived in those places, and there she was. He saw her right away through a rack of clothes on the other side of the store, behind some weight machines and exercise mats. It was like he was supposed to see her. She was small, very petite. At first she looked plain from the side. Brownish hair, shoulder length. Not tan even this time of year. She seemed just normal. But the more he looked at her, something stirred inside him. There are no words to describe when that happens. It just does. Sometimes it results in something special, sometimes in frustration and heartache. For guys like him, it was usually the latter out of necessity. His buddy looked at him, looked at her, looked back at him, then again at her as Brannock stared. Dude, she's like half your age. What the fuck? Brannock said nothing, so his friend nudged him. What is wrong with you? Huh? Brannock said, nodding his head in the direction of the petite sales girl girl. His friend mouthed her. Brannock again said nothing, but turned to look back in her direction. Her name was Thistle, her name tag said. He liked it. It was peaceful, beautiful, but with an edge since a thistle had those little thorny things along the stem. If you weren't careful, you could get cut and bleed. Well, that was how it really happened. It took Brannock three weeks to actually speak to her. He even avoided her checkout line so he didn't have to talk to her. What the fuck would he say? I look like your dad, but can we get something to eat? Should he ask her to a club? He would be so out of his element there. Coffee? Movie? Shit. It had been so freaking long since he had dated. She may not even have been alive when he had even seriously tried to do it before. Usually his girlfriends had come from a night of quick sex and had just stuck around. But he didn't usually date them. Damn it. He'd killed things that could tear an elephant to pieces, had been thrown out to sea, had seen dozens of buddies die. This could not be so hard and so scary.